Hello everyone. Today we're looking at a fascinating topic, fasting and autophagy in humans, what we know as of 2024. Autophagy is a natural and regulated mechanism of the cell that breaks down and utilizes unnecessary or dysfunctional components. These can be, for example, misfolded proteins or old cell organelles. Autophagy is an important process that helps maintain cell health, and our fasting behavior can influence this process. Before we get into how to prove all this, let's take a quick look at fasting itself. Fasting not only affects our weight and well-being but also our cells. Research has shown that fasting for 48 hours in mice and up to 4 days in human subjects leads to changes in the plasma metabolome. The plasma metabolome is the entirety of all metabolic products that occur in the blood plasma. Fasting causes some of these substances to decrease and others to increase. For example, blood sugar levels decrease while ketone bodies increase. These changes reflect how the body adjusts its energy sources when it is deprived of food. An important adaptation the body makes when fasting is the activation of autophagy. Autophagy is a process in which cells break down and recycle their own components. This can help cells rid themselves of harmful or unnecessary substances and optimize their function. Autophagy is therefore an important factor in cell health and aging. But how long do we need to fast to increase autophagy? This question is actually controversially discussed in science. Some sources suggest that autophagy rates are already increased after about 13 to 16 hours of fasting. Other studies suggest that longer fasting periods of up to 48 to 60 hours or even 7 to 10 days may be necessary to significantly increase autophagy. It is important to note that the exact mechanisms and timing of autophagy activation in the human body are not yet fully understood and further research is needed. In addition, an individual's response to fasting may depend on various factors, including general health, diet, and lifestyle in general. In addition to fasting, there are various other measures that can stimulate autophagy. This includes regular moderate exercise and targeted exercises, reducing calories and choosing certain foods. These foods contain substances that increase the activity of sirtuins. Sirtuins are enzymes linked to longevity and can promote autophagy. The foods that activate sirtuins include the so-called cert foods, these include green vegetables, citrus fruits, berries, turmeric and black coffee, which can stimulate autophagy. Other beneficial foods include nuts, mushrooms and soybeans, which are rich in spermidine. Spermidine in turn is a polyamine that can also activate autophagy. In addition, fasting also leads to reduced protein lysine acetylation in circulating leukocytes. This means that the white blood cells, which are responsible for immune defense, attach fewer acetyl groups to their proteins. This modification can affect the function and stability of the proteins. The exact role of protein lysine acetylation in immune regulation is not yet fully understood, but there is evidence that it may have an anti-inflammatory effect. But now let's come to the question, can we measure the preventive effects of fasting? Since these preventive effects are largely due to autophagy, the more specific question is, is it possible to measure the autophagy that occurs during fasting? When people or mice fast, for example, their white blood cells react. They show an increase in a specific process known as LC3B lipidation. This process is a sign that autophagy is taking place, but why is it like that? Inside our cells there are small, round structures known as vesicles. They are like small packages that transport different substances inside and outside the cell. During autophagy, unwanted or damaged cell components are packaged into these vesicles and transported to the cell's own recycling facility, the lysosomes. An important step in this process is LC3B lipidation. A protein called LC3B is bound to the membrane of the vesicles. The more of these LC3B bound vesicles there are in the cells, the more active the autophagy process is. This means that the cells are busy breaking down and recycling unwanted or damaged parts. This process is especially important during fasting. During this time the body tries to save energy and work more efficiently. By activating autophagy, the body can make optimal use of its resources while ensuring that cells remain healthy and functional. This increases the body's resistance to survive a phase of hunger, which is also known as resilience. And the ability to measure LC3B lipidation in the laboratory, for example through the use of antibodies and fluorescent markers, suggests that fasting may actually increase autophagy in our cells. Previous studies have already demonstrated and quantified the health benefits of fasting in various animal models. 
the ability to observe markers of autophagy in human systems opens up new possibilities. It is now becoming feasible to further explore the influence of fasting on autophagy, as well as the influence of autophagy on the health benefits of fasting in humans. This could help deepen and expand our understanding of the benefits of fasting. Let's take a look at current research and development. This shows that during fasting, certain white blood cells, the so-called neutrophils, show signs that autophagy has been activated in them. This could help monitor the state of autophagy, also known as autophagic flux, in the blood. The autophagic flux describes the different steps of the recycling process in a cell. It begins with preparation, then degradation, and finally ends with reuse of cell parts. In conclusion, fasting can lead to changes in autophagy levels in humans, as has been observed in the response of white blood cells to nutrient deficiency. It's fascinating to see how our dietary choices can have an impact on a cellular level. However, the duration of fasting required to produce significant changes in autophagy markers is not clearly established. Studies suggest that in humans, autophagic flux only increases significantly after about 12 to 24 hours of fasting but is still far from maximum. However, this increase can be influenced by various factors such as health status, nutritional status, and lifestyle. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. As always, we wish you a long, healthy, and happy life. See you next time.